Hello and welcome to another ServiceNow Express video blog post on the concept of service catalog items and around the idea of how do you set up new items, how can we create workflow on these new items and what does it really take to automate a new business process using the ServiceNow Express service catalog. So as you'll notice I've got a few additional items here on my service catalog Items like HR, for when an HR user that comes in, they can easily go and kick off a new onboarding workflow. You know, let's say a, a new hire is a user profile that we just created in our system, and we're just going to go ahead and order that and see that there's a unique workflow that gets kicked off. In this case, we're going to order the new hire's items, procure their phone, provision their hardware and software in parallel, and then only after those are done, complete the task fulfillment. So the question is, how do I set up a new catalog item? How do I set up these workflows? And what does it really take to get a process up and running start to finish? So the first step you're going to need to do is open up as a system administrator, head over to your catalog items. So I'm going to switch my view now as a system administrator and come into that catalog items service catalog catalog definition. You'll see you have a complete list of all the items that were out of box or as demo data in your system. But why don't we create a new one from scratch? So the first thing to do is create a new catalog item. So you're going to have a number of fields here already to select from for this item. So let's start from the top. So for this example, let's say we want to offer chocolate in our service catalog and create a unique chocolate workflow to procure that item. So we're going to say order chocolate. Category, let's just put this under get stuff. So this is where it's going to appear under when users search for it. If you recall, when I came in as the end user and I was going in through the sections, such as get stuff, this is the category where it's going to lay in as an item. So you can have additional subcategories like hardware, software, and we see the items there. But so for now, let's put it at the highest level under get stuff. So you can use it on desktop or mobile and specify one or the other. And the advantage of that is maybe you want to change the way it renders, change the description or image or price from when a user orders from the mobile version compared to when the user orders from the desktop version and have two separate copies. But for now, let's keep it the same and make it available on both desktop and mobile. The next step is to select the base price for this item. So it's going to cost my company around $20, so I'll put $20 in here. I then choose any roles if I want to do access controls on this catalog item so only specific users can see it, you select it from the roles. But I'm going to keep it open for all users to order chocolate under my get stuff category. So let's do the next step of adding images and pictures to this catalog item. So talking to these points here, the item you see here to the left under your items, this is the image icon. When I click into the record, what you see here, this is referred to as the picture. So icon is the small before you click into it and the picture is on the actual request record. So my icon for this chocolate, let's go ahead and see if we could find a chocolate file here, maybe a chocolate bar. And I'm gonna come in, let's choose this dark chocolate view here. Or if I wanted to do a simple one that's a nicely sized. I'll add that dark chocolate image as my icon. And why don't we add more, our more extensive dark chocolate picture as the actual picture file. So here I've got an image of chocolate. Let me select this one to add and I'll press OK. So we're going to, after we've got our icon and our picture set, the next step is to give this a short description for when it appears. So the short description is what appears under the catalog name. So you'll notice for this hardware item as development laptop, here's your name, here's your short description underneath it, and when you expand more information, this includes the full description. So let's head back. We've added our short description. We've added in our icons, our pictures. Let's go ahead and add the short description. And I'm going to say order chocolate, submit a request for a chocolate order. A full description, we can add extensive information here. You know, you will be purchasing 10 ounces of premium Belgian dark chocolate. Maybe uh, cocoa percentage is 80%. So very easy to come into the system and set up how this is going to look. But the important pieces of the functionality is 
adding in your own variables and adding in your own workflow. So we'll get to the workflow portion after we set up our variables, but the workflow is defined in what we call our execution plans. So let's define these variables before proceeding. I'm going to come in, I'm going to go ahead and select my new variable, and let's just say I want a text field just for the end user, maybe if he wants to submit a comment regarding his order. So I'll say order comment, and I'll go ahead and submit that. Maybe I want to add another for shipping location. Where does this chocolate, where should it be shipped? So for this, we're going to select not a single line text, but we'll select a reference field because we have locations. So I'll say shipping location. I'll go under my type specifications, select the reference of my location table, and then simply submit. So we have our reference for our shipping location. We've got a single line text variable for order comment. Let's add another one to dynamically change the price. So for this one, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to choose a checkbox. Under this checkbox, let's just say double order size. And I'm going to offer on a double order size, we'll add an additional price of $15. So they're going to be getting a discount of 25% if they want to order a double size. So I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And now what you'll see is we've got our three variables, one reference for shipping location, one checkbox for double order size, and finally one single line text. So the final thing is within our variables to select the order you want them to appear in. So the lowest order number will appear at the top and appear first. So first, let's put in the shipping location. I'll set that at 10. Next, we'll put in the order comment. And then we can finally finish with the checkbox for doubling the order size. So very easy to do and save here in the system. So I'm going to go ahead and save this catalog item for order chocolate. So we'll save this. And now what we've done so far is we set up the entire item. We have all our images set, the prices set, the category it's going to reside in the set, and we've set our variables. So in terms of this development laptop here, this example, these here are variables that are used as an example, and they dynamically change the price field. So this is the picture, and this is our description. So now when it comes to actually kicking off the workflow, how is it that we can come into the system and generate a workflow that runs parallel or serial per our request? So let's look at setting up a workflow now for your catalog item. What you'll see is under my execution plan field, it's currently set to default, but why don't we create a new one for this chocolate order? I'm going to go and press new under my execution plans and let's create a new workflow. I'll call it chocolate delivery and we can choose if we want this to run on a specific calendar such as Monday through Friday, but I'm just going to give it that short description of complete fulfillment of chocolate request. I'll say the delivery takes one week, so seven days, and we're going to go ahead and submit this into the system. So what you'll see is now I've created a new execution plan, is what it's called, for this chocolate delivery. But currently, this execution plan doesn't have any tasks tied to it. I can come in then and pick exactly all the workflow tasks that I want to run. So let's say the first task, we're going to call this order chocolate from vendor. I'm going to give it order 100, so it'll be our first item, and then we could give instructions, you know, visit designated vendor site and place order to be, to be shipped to address set by customer's location request. So this is where you can then reference the actual variable that they put in, such as their location, and you could tell the user who's going to get auto-assigned this task in the workflow to go and check the customer's location request to know where to ship it. You can assign a specific user if it's a single user. Let's say Alfonso's in charge of delivering chocolate or ordering chocolate. So then we could also go ahead and specify a set fulfillment group. So this is the group who's going to be assigned for the fulfillment. And let's just say that's our procurement because they need to order the chocolate from the vendor. I'm just going to say order 
chocolate as our short description and submit so now we've got one task in our system we don't have any delivery time set but if you want to be as granular as to give an expected delivery time for each step so let's say this will take four days you can do so as well I'm gonna go ahead then and create two following tasks that will have run sequential we'll assign this to Alfonso as well and we'll give it an order of 200 we'll say the delivery time for the confirmation should only be 12 hours and I'll go ahead and save that I have this pickup location set to an order of 200 so what that means is it's gonna wait for this order 100 order chocolate from vendor item to complete before it continues on to the confirmation of the pickup location so if I want another task to run in sequential order alongside with this confirmation of pickup I simply need to give it an order of 200 as well so if we want to say confirm vendor delivery to location and we'll say that you know confirm vendor delivery instructions confirm that vendor is shipping to proper address I'll give it also a delivery time of 12 hours but importantly I'm giving it an order of 200 so now as this automated workflow this execution plan runs it's gonna go through if there's any approval then it's gonna go through this order chocolate from vendor task auto assign itself to procurement and Alfonso and only after that's completed is it gonna open in the system this confirm pickup location task as well as at the same time this confirm vendor delivery so if I added a final task here at the end let's give it order 300 and I called this deliver chocolate and let's assign this to the field services we're gonna be out there delivering chocolate and I'll put in deliver chocolate again you could see I submit that but essentially my workflow is now gonna run first with our order chocolate task only when this is complete will we open in parallel the confirm pickup location and confirm vendor delivery tasks and only once these two have completed will it proceed to the delivery of the chocolate so I'm gonna head and update this workflow and just like that we have completed creating a new catalog item so why don't we try out what we've done between all the variables we've set up all the information for short description pictures and icons as well as that chocolate delivery execution plan let's come in as Joe employee under this get stuff section and what you'll note is directly under items I now have order chocolate so here's the icon we set out here's the short description and if I expand for more information we can see our extended description and picture so why don't we click into that and order ourselves chocolate so you'll see the shipping location variable we specified to come first that's a reference to location so you know I want to ship to the San Diego I'm gonna say order comment uh, please gift wrap and then I want to select my option to double the order size and you'll notice my price has dynamically switched from twenty dollars to thirty five so it's dynamically reflecting that selection I can then press order now and we'll see that we're kicking off with our default approval in place our complete chocolate delivery workflow order chocolate confirm chocolate pickup location confirm vendry delivery location and then deliver the actual chocolate